Hey everyone, Sean Frangella here for MotionTutorial.net with a Cinema 4D video on a new feature for R18, the Honeycomb Array setting for MoGraph cloners. This episode is brought to you by Artbeats Express. Create a free account at artbeatsexpress.media by subscription and receive complimentary broadcast quality resolution content files. No credit card payments or obligations are required. Click the link for more details. So the Honeycomb Array is a really cool new mode for a cloner that you can use to create offset and honeycomb patterns with cloned objects like we see in some of these still renders and this animation. And if we take a look at these project files, what it's doing is working similar to our grid array if we had it on one axis. But with the honeycomb array, it's basically taking our clones, putting them on one axis and then offsetting them by default 50%. So if you have something like a hexagon, they could all snap together. And if we take a look at this animation, that's exactly what we have going on. And then we're using an animating a vector to rotate and scale these out. And if we take a look at this second project file, we have something similar going on, but we have it on the Y axis. And this illustrates a little clearer what's happening. So if we typically had a MoGraph cloner, just cloning objects on one grid off in the distance, the main thing that's driving this is this orientation and this offset slider. So if we move this around, we can see how it's intersecting them. So it's taking half the clones and offsetting them on whichever axis you have. So let's talk about setting this up from scratch and some cool customization settings. Let's just create a cube. So if we were setting this up and we wanted to clone these cubes, we could go to MoGraph cloner and hold alt while we're highlighting cloner with our cube selected and it's going to clone those cubes. Now, instead of linear or grid array, let's do honeycomb array. And you can see automatically it sets it up along the Z axis and offsets them. So again, this would be if we were doing one grid array and now you can see what's happening is it's offsetting them 50%. So if we're at zero, this is what we would have before and 50% is going to perfectly offset them in the middle. So then if we took the size and width down on this, we could get them to snap exactly together. So since this is 10 by 10, if we wanted to do the math, it would be 200 by 200. And then they would be snapped together. So if we did something like 202 by 202, we can see that little line in between those cloned objects. Now, if we turn this up more, we'll get more objects and build this out further. So you can see already what we can do with just a cube. And we can do this with one object clone and use our honeycomb array with our offset to adjust this. Now we could change the orientation as well if we wanted it to be along the X or Y axis. And we could see now this gives us that different look where they're going back in depth and we could adjust our width and height that way. We also could pop open this little offset and get offset variation moving as well as perpendicular variation. If we just wanted to give it a little bit of variation and it to not look uniform. Now let's set this up to actually look like a honeycomb because that's pretty cool. So if we had just an end side, and that's going to give us our hexagon and we'll just quickly extrude that. So we get a bit of hexagon geometry. We could drop that into our cloner and boom, there we got our cool cloned hexagons. We could switch this back to the Z axis and zero out these variation parameters. We'll just pull our camera away a bit and just scale this up a bit and let's just put these at whole numbers so we can see a bit more what we're doing. And there we can see how this nicely snaps together. Now we could do this previously on a grid array using some little tricks with nulls, but being able to do this right out of the gate and set this up is a huge help if you're trying to do something really specific like this and you don't wanna spend the time to try to get a grid array and change the counts and add nulls. And if you want to check out more new features for Cinema 4D R18, be sure to check out motiontutorials.net where I have full breakdowns on all of the new features, including my top five new features, MoGraph updates, the new thin film shader, the awesome new Vernoy fracture, and more new features. And don't forget to check out some of the new Cinema 4D products I have in the online store at motiontutorials.net slash store, where you can pick up Cinema 4D templates, lighting and rendering assets, and new packs for 360 Environment Maps Pro, which are packs of 8K environment photos 
assets and a Cinema 4D templates to quickly and easily make your 3D scenes look awesome. If you have any questions on this tutorial or any of my other new feature tutorials, be sure to follow me on Twitter. I'm at Sean Frangella and check out the Facebook page at facebook.com slash motion tutorials. I love hearing from fans of the videos and talking about all these new features. And if you want a quick dose of other new features for R18, be sure to check out the other R18 videos I have up on YouTube by clicking on any of those thumbnails that are popping up there now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you at the next video.